Okay, so we are in the World Wars 204 to 207. From 1941 until June of 1944, most of the fighting took place in the Soviet Union and the Pacific. But in England, the Allies had spent two years building up a powerful force to invade and liberate Western Europe from the Nazis. People joked that the only thing stopping the island sinking under the weight of all the men and equipment were the anti-aircraft barrage balloons that flew over every military base. And here's a picture of Commander-in-Chief of the United States, General Eisenhower, visits parachute troops on the eve of the invasion. D-Day is going to be a big deal, okay? Within hours, these men are fighting and dying in France. So D-Day is something you will hear a lot about. So pay attention. The Germans knew an invasion was inevitable. They had been expecting it for some time. From Norway to Spain, they had built concrete fortresses and heavy gun positions and sewn the beaches with barbed wire mines and anti-tank obstacles. The Atlantic Wall, as it was known, looked formidable, but it had weaknesses. It was too long to defend strongly at any single point, and it was mostly held by second-rate soldiers. But there were still strong German forces in France who would hurry at once to stop any invasion. American General Dwight D. Eisenhower was given the enormous task of directing the invasion of Canadian, British, and American troops, codenamed Operation Overlord. He would have to break the Atlantic Wall, allow his men to land, then transport troops, tanks, and other equipment at great speed before the Germans could throw them back into the sea. He also had to decide on a landing point. Cal I don't know how to pronounce this. Calais? I'm gonna, I'll try to figure out how to pronounce that for you. C-A-L-A-I-S. I have not heard that word. Calais was nearest, but it was strongly defended and right in the north of France. Normandy though, okay, and actually, actually the more important city to remember though, further offered a more direct way into the rest of France and the entire south coast of England could be used as a launch point. British General Montgomery, British General Bernard Montgomery planned to land at five points along a 60 mile stretch of coast. And we're talking about the French coast by Normandy, okay? Troops would arrive by sea in landing craft, others by parachute or glider. Once they captured a beachhead, they had to be able to land to land further troops and supplies at great speed. The ports were too well defended to attack, so the Allies had to make their own landing jetty, jetties. Two huge ones, codenamed mulberries, were built from concrete sections to be towed across the channel. Pluto, which is a vast pipe under the ocean, so P-L-U-T-O, see that? Was laid down to provide fuel for the vehicles. Special weapons were developed to help the Allies in those first crucial hours. Sherman tanks were fitted with propellers and canvas flotation collars to allow them to float ashore. Other tanks had rotating flails of steel chains attached to their fronts to destroy mines buried on the beaches. Some tanks carried giant spools of fabric to be unraveled on soft sand to allow other vehicles to get off the beach without sinking. But most fearsome at all, of all were Churchill tanks filled with napalm flamethrowers. These can shoot a jet fire of 110 meters, 360 feet, towards enemy positions. Okay, so a convoy of light, lighter planes fresh off the boat from America trundles through the streets of Liverpool. They are on their way to bases in the south of England during the build up to the landings. Okay, faking it. So finally the Allies, those are the good guys, right? Us. <laughs> pulled off an amazing confidence trick. Fake fuel and equipment dumps, as well as landing crafts and airfields were built in Kent, just across the channel from Calais. I gotta, I gotta figure out how to pronounce that. To foot, um, to fool German reconnaissance aircraft and make the Germans think the invasion was really heading there instead. Radio signals for a non-existent new invasion army based in Kent buzzed across the airwaves. Even a small invasion fleet was assembled. When everything was ready, Eisenhower and his staff and hundreds and thousands of soldiers, sailors and airmen had to wait for the crucial moment to proceed. The time, okay, so now here we have the D-Day landings. Okay, so this is France, okay? And let me see if I can find, give me a second. I wanna find a bigger, I know we had a bigger picture up here of the whole, um, well, that's France. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Sorry. This is what I was looking for. <laughs> okay. So here is France. Okay. And so we're talking about this area over here. Okay. And you can kind of see it now there. 
okay? That's France sort of sticking out in there. And this is where we're talking about that we're gonna land, okay? So the timing of the Normandy landings was crucial. Tides, weather, moonlight, all had to be right. By early June, everything was ready, but unseasonable storms lashed the channel. Then forecasters predicted a lull on the night of June 5 through 6. Eisenhower, his troops already packed into invasion ships and barges, could wait no longer. On June 5, a fleet of 5,000 ships moved out from the ports of southern England to assemble off the Normandy coast. That night, troops crowded into gliders and planes and ground crews armed the fighters and bombers that accompanied the invasion force. In all, 9,000 aircraft took part. French resistance forces were tipped off via a coded message. Throughout France, railway lines and telephone exchanges were blown up to hamper German forces heading for the coast. The invasion began because remember, Germany has occupied France, okay? And we're trying to get Germany out. German forces headed for the coast. The invasion began at 1216 on June 6, known as D-Day, when three British gliders packed with troops landed just outside Caen, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, C-A-E-N, on the edge of the invasion zone. Their task was to capture vital roads and bridges or destroy enemy strong points. For many soldiers in the landing crafts, the invasion began in a blur of seasickness, freezing spray, and noise from the guns of allied warships and thousands of planes flying low overhead. By preventing attacks on the invaders, the planes were crucial to success. At 6.30 a.m., the first seaborne troops landed at the poorly defended Utah Beach. By nightfall, 23,000 U.S. troops had come ashore with only 200 casualties. Omaha Beach would be much more difficult. Right from the start, landing craft were subjected to heavy artillery and machine gun fire. And I actually have been to the shores of Normandy um, in France. I was there when I was in my 20s. Around a thousand Americans were killed at Omaha Beach. It was to be the worst bloodshed that day. British and Canadian troops landing further east had mixed fortunes. The beach landings were easier, but they met heavy German opposition as they tried to move inland. By the evening, 150,000 Allied troops had landed in Normandy. Casualties had been relatively light. Only 2,500 men in total were killed. Hitler was told of the Allied landings when he woke around midday. He was delighted. As long as they were in Britain, we couldn't get at them. Now we have them where we can destroy them. But his commanders on the ground were divided on what to do. Field Marshal, Marshal Van Rundstedt, commander-in-chief of all German Western forces, wanted to let the Allies build up their forces before he attacked in strength. This, he hoped, would allow him to destroy more of his enemy's troops. His second-in-command, Erwin Rommel, wanted an early attack to destroy the Allies on their beachheads. But the Germans were still convinced that the main attack would come at Calais. I got it. Ah, it's driving me crazy. So they held back reinforcements. The Allies completely dominated the skies, annihilating German troops and tanks as they headed up to Normandy. By the end of June, Eisenhower had 850,000 men and 150,000 vehicles ashore. His gamble had paid off. There was no doubt now that Germany would lose the war. The only question was how much longer it takes. And here our American war photographer, this is a real picture, Robert Kappa took this close up of Omaha Beach. And the very first troops to land in Omaha Beach are already pinned down by numerous machine gun fire from the high cliffs above the beach. So they're coming in to France's soil.